Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be discussing a story and tale and doing a big deep dive into one of the most disgusting, despicable, and awful situations that I have personally witnessed in the history of TikTok. And trust me, there are a lot of disgusting and despicable stories in the history of TikTok. This is a tale of crime, deceit, lies, manipulation, scamming, and most importantly, tattoos. In a saga which has now completely taken over TikTok, garnering millions of views, people are giving their outcry, their two cents, their words, people in rage, shouting, getting the pitchforks out about the sheer injustice of this situation. Yes, my friends, welcome to Tattoo Gate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I understand what you're probably thinking right now. Fraser, you have not got a single tattoo on your little six foot two body, and I am six foot two. Please do not measure me. And I understand your complaint. I understand you're probably thinking you've got no business. Why don't you just go do something better with your time? And I will simply counter that by saying, hold up. You're about to spend your next 30 minutes to an hour watching a video about a topic which you have no idea about, and you're calling me a loser. Let's get things straight here. We're both absolute losers. So strap in and get ready for the ride. But also you're probably wondering, but what actually is Tattoo Gate? Well, it's a controversy going around on TikTok involving an alleged scam of where people have been severely overcharged for certain things in the tattoo business, which have now been exposed as deceptive practices and also has outright led to the outright downfall of somebody's tattoo career, whilst also leading to an eight-part apology from a professional tattoo artist and multiple people coming out and exposing the situation and the deceit and lies behind everything. Thing. But honestly, my main take from all of this is why does every single controversy on TikTok have gate in front of it? You've got cake gate, you've got pink sauce gate, you've got now tattoo gate, you've got Charles's big chubby fingers gate. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, I honestly don't know why everything has to have gate in front of it. But uh, yes, this is tattoo gate. And with that, let's get into the beginning of of this story. This story starts off with this lovely woman called Courtney, also known as Running Mom of Boys, and I'm not really sure what I can say about Courtney. I don't know who this person is, other than she runs this fine TikTok account right here, and she seems like a very sweet and wholesome person. Somebody which, honestly, I don't think has actually done any bad in the world whatsoever, and you're probably thinking, Fraser, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and honestly, you're probably absolutely right, and it says a lot about my character, but given all of the research that I've done in this video, and given all of the insight that I now currently have, this person genuinely surprises me because they have been absolutely taken advantage of and despite that they have been absolutely lovely and nice to the people that have done them dirty so yes what has actually happened here well pretty much a few weeks ago because yes i am late to the story courtney uploaded a multiple part tiktok where she spoke about her experience with a certain tattoo artist called Lindsay, and she pretty much stumbled upon Lindsay's page and thought the art that she posted was good the tattoos that she did in the past were was seriously good and she wanted to pay the price to get art from this person Lindsay so what she did was commissioned a fox Piece. And no, ladies and gentlemen, not this type of fox, this type of fox. But typically, this just seems like your regular tattoo story, you know? You want a little jab into your arm. Personally, I'm a big old pussy. You can never do that. But, you know, you want a tattoo, you get a, a, a reference photo, you take it to a tattoo um, artist, you maybe have a consultation, and you start to develop some form of art piece that you are going to have placed on your body for the rest of your life, which you will probably regret in two years' time. And with that, that leads us into the first TikTok in this story, because you and I know that this is absolutely not what happened and things became an utter disaster. Story time, hopefully one part, I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can. So um, I wanted a tattoo by this artist who I love, who's very talented on Instagram. I'm not, this is nothing to do with her talent as a tattoo artist, just kind of uh, the business practices that I've dealt with over the last 24 hours. So um, booked a consult with her a couple months ago. Consult was non-refundable. It was $180. That was just on our website. That's fine. I paid that. We had a Zoom consult on Friday. I showed her these uh, reference photos as to what I wanted for a half upper arm sleeve. Um, we kind of talked about it a little bit. I said I wasn't really picky on what kind of flowers I wanted. I wanted the fox to look like he was running. Um, foxes were my favorite animal. I said I wanted some watercolor on the fox. The flowers were just gonna be whatever she thought would look good. Um, she then proceeded to tell me after I had already booked my, I had paid for the consult. She told me that she had 
these three options for her design fee. So she charges a design fee to design her tattoos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are two issues on hand here. Firstly, I am extremely sweaty right now because it is the summer and I simply do not react well to the heat. But secondly, I have never heard of somebody paying money for a sketch or a consultation. Now, maybe when it comes to a sketch, I can see it happening with somebody who's like a, a, a top level tattoo artist. They've got millions of followers. They're tattooing Kim K. Um, Kim... Jay? I saw, no, not that. Jeez. No, not him. Not certainly not that man. Do not tattoo Kim Jay. Don't. That would be really controversial. But what I'm saying here is it, I can maybe get there being a fee for a consultation and a sketch if it was a very famous tattoo artist. But Lindsay, <laughs> she's not really that famous. As you can see, she's got like 6,000 followers. That certainly isn't the case here. But yeah, not only has she charged a consultation fee, but a very high fee, albeit that, a lot of the comments just started to point out this is very weird. As you can see, here are people who actually have had tattoos and they were thinking this is strange. I've never experienced a consultation price when just simply speaking to a tattoo artist because to be honest with you it doesn't really make much sense you're paying to have a conversation there being like oh yeah could you possibly do this what sort of art do you do what sort of work do you do you work in, you know, you don't just go into like, I don't know, a tool shop and you, you speak to the, the tool man about what tools they like to use, if they've got any examples which they should possibly use, and you don't expect to walk away from that conversation getting charged $150, but here, it seems that that very much was the case, and yeah, the comments were a little bit confused by this. So ladies and gentlemen, as you can probably tell at this point, this whole situation is going to become a massive financial debacle. A financial debacle, and I do not say debacle lightly, a debacle buckle which goes into one of the biggest and strangest and stupidest deep dives that I think I've ever seen and a true representation of exploitation, I can't even speak English, exploitation in the industry. Now before we go any further, I do just want to say I have a lot of respect, I have tons of respect for tattoo artists out there. Artists in general are extremely underpaid and I want to say that I don't think that this situation should be a representation that tattoo artists are overpaid. In fact, I think most people would say tattoo artists are quite underpaid and in a lot of situations masterpieces are curated and I think that these people should be financially compensated for curating those masterpieces which aren't just drawn on a piece of paper but are literally inked permanently onto somebody's skin. I think people should be paid well for that but this situation isn't a case of just somebody being overpaid. It's it's definitely not that. And yeah, even if you're like me and you think a $150 or $160 consultation fee is ridiculous, you could at least say, well, if, if at the ending of it a masterpiece was created, maybe it was it was worth it, but um, that's exactly what did not happen in this situation, and this is far more than just paying ridiculous and extortionate fees. This is people being lied to and taken advantage of and exploited, and just in general, somebody being a massive bellend. So the first option was $1,500 plus tax, and you get um, a concept sketch and you can make one minor change and then a final design that you'll review. Um, concept, the option number two was $3,500 plus tax, um, where you got two concept sketches and a couple changes and um, a final design review again. And then option three was $6,000 plus tax, where you would get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and lots of changes and like a canvas. $6,000? for a sketch. Now, if I'm paying $6,000 for a, for a sketch, I want the f***ing sequel to the Mona Lisa, thank you very much. I, I, I am, I'm not ever really seeing a justification where a sketch, not an art piece, just a, a sketch, and I'm not saying sketches aren't necessarily art, but for $6,000, I'm going to want some, some good, at least coloured in art. And yes, they go on to explain this free part system, where you pay $1,500 plus tax, don't forget the tax, you then get one concept sketch and one change, you can then pay $3,500 plus tax and get two concept sketches and a couple changes, or you can even play a massive whopping $6,000 plus tax to get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and changes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm not going to lie to you, when it comes to the $6,000 package, that's the one I would usually expect with any regular tattoo artist without paying extortionate fees of $6,000. That could be going towards my tuition. Actually, no, not in this country. It could be going to, like... 
three quarters of my tuition fee, and that's still quite a lot. I, I don't think there is any justification out there for realistically a sketch being $6,000. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as I said, it's not just about the money in this situation. Yes, they are absolutely extortionate prices, but it's also how these phases or part three system is, is used. I don't even know what to call it. It's weird extortionate system is, is is used because in this story courtney yes she went ahead and commissioned Lindsay. she gave her as two reference photos to use to show what she would want in her tattoo sketch and Lindsay went away she she got a little pen and some and papers out and what she came up with was this <laughs> monstrosity i i I don't really know what this is. And I'm not just saying that it's bad. I'm not saying it's monstrosity because it, it, it's bad. I'm saying it's a monstrosity because this costs $6,000. She couldn't even color it in. I mean, this literally looks like somebody has spent like 10 minutes doing a little doodle whilst they're listening to their university professor drone on about something. This is something that I would have drew in school. But the main problem is, is in these reference photos that Courtney showed, they were clearly full fox in a certain way and when you compare it to this reference photo obviously this is only half for fox here it's like a hybrid flower fox messed up transformer weird looking thing and that's exactly not what she asked for so that's one problem here outside of the money issue because what she has paid for isn't what she has got that then leads us into issue number two because when courtney was like hey this isn't what i requested it then led into this first i kind of thought that that price was going to then be taking it out of the final cost of my tattoo but then i find out that it was not um i was still kind of blindsided didn't really know what to say um she asked which con which option worked best for me obviously i picked number one because like it's super expensive and she had these pictures so i was confident that she was going to make me a beautiful piece so monday rolls around and she sends me this this is her concept sketch <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, but can you imagine spending thousands of dollars, man, thousands of your hard-earned cash, and, and the result is this. Like, just look at this for a second. It, it's, this is, I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't care about the respecting all artists here. Like, I, I get it, it's a, it's a hard medium to be in and stuff like that, and I completely understand, but this, I, I can't respect it. I, I can't. No, I'm not doing it. But yeah, as I said, this leads into further problems because as I said, and as she just said that, this, you know, this wasn't what she really uh, requested. Let, let's just show the reference again. And let's show the result. <laughs> what the f*** is that? It is nothing like what I sent her. It's nothing like I, what I wanted. I emailed her immediately to tell her that I wanted a full fox. I wanted a tail. I wanted the fox to be the main feature i wanted to be less flowers more fox forward um and i said i know i picked option one but this isn't what i had asked for with my pictures i sent you she said that if i wanted another sketch she was going to charge me the difference between option one and option number two which is two thousand two hundred and sixty dollars she said it was my fault that i wasn't clear that i wanted a full fox but like honestly these are the two pictures i sent her both full fox both in the same position I, I don't know how much clearer i could have firstly i just want to go back to what i mentioned earlier of this person courtney being an absolutely lovely individual because they have not got what they paid for and when asking for what they paid for the person came back to them and said i'm gonna charge you even more money and it's like mate jesus christ i mean at least just be like i'm not gonna do that but here's your money back obviously the situation does not even go even close to that it goes to the complete opposite trajectory of that but yeah courtney with that then it's just like yeah i i really wasn't happy about this and i'm not even criticizing courtney here but she is too nice and i completely understand it not all of us are are confrontational people i'm not really confrontational myself for the most part even though i run a channel where i confront a lot of issues but this is i'm a keyboard warrior let's just put it like that and with courtney in this situation i think she's the exact sort of person that Lindsay looks for somebody who really isn't gonna i i wouldn't say not kick up a fuss because obviously courtney did go against Lindsay. In a situation was like hey i i deserve some form of money back or i'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here 
but she did speak against Lindsay, but I think Lindsay targets certain people who she knows that she can take advantage of just simply because they are nice people. And yes, this is just a theory, but based on everything that we're going to be going into, because as I said, this is a big old deep dive and things just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's kind of the conclusion that I've come to at this point. And the comment section in general is just really shocked with not just the design, but the fee as well, because as I said earlier, most people have not experienced, like, paying for a sketch, paying for a consultation, and people on the internet were starting to think this is just absolutely ridiculous and was the birth of Tattoo Gate. And like all massive political scandals in this world, it does also involve emails. Because Courtney in her part two video shows that there are 20 emails back and forth between her and Lindsay, and just how horribly Lindsay handled this situation afterwards. Now at this point of time, yes, this situation wasn't public between these emails and that's probably why Lindsay was being so I guess cocky so uh, just honestly mean in the emails to Courtney but the moment that this whole thing went public I will again skip a bit forward in the timeline Lindsay has made her Instagram private and I will say do not go over there and, and, and harass this individual I wasn't going to show it but I've basically seen that this person's Instagram and shop has been in literally every article out there multiple videos videos of millions of views so it's nothing really I can do to hide this now and to be honest with you it is a public tattoo shop and I, I I'm not saying to not go there but I am putting this video up there almost as a warning to people that possibly were considering it I don't know who but maybe there was somebody that was gonna but yes I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here let's actually get into the email part of this so here's the email where she tells me that um, I didn't tell her that I wanted the fox to have a full fox, um, even though I sent her two pictures saying I wanted the fox to have a full fox, so you can pause to read. Now, I am going to read you these emails, and I'm going to give you a bit of a warning. There's nothing explicit in these emails, but you may get annoyed of somebody being a complete and utter bellend, because being a bellend can be a very annoying thing to witness, and that's exactly what we have in these emails. So this is Lindsay the Tattoo Artist saying, When we discussed the fox, you didn't say that the fox had to be in a downward position. You didn't mention that the tail had to be visible. You said you liked the fact that it looked like it was in motion, which I do feel I captured in the concept I offered. It's running and leaping through the frame of flowers. The petals give the impression it's just burst through the flowers with no time to waste. Look, Lindsay, the only time being wasted right now is mine. I'm sweaty, I'm hot, I'm bothered, and I'm having to read your bullshit excuses. Please, just stop what you're doing right now. This is the art you made. There is no burst or jump through the flowers. What you are saying in this email is such a lie. I do not understand how you can charge thousands of dollars for this and then double down on it. But then, ladies and gentlemen, after this it gets even worse. Like, she goes from doubling down to then criticizing the reference photos that were originally provided. She said that the images that were sent didn't feel like the foxes were in natural positions. I mean, these foxes are going to be going on the arm. It's not really a natural thing that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I, I really don't think it's that deep. Isn't the whole point of art to, to draw abstract things in, in some scenarios where things do look a little bit unique, a little bit unusual? If somebody has requested something in a certain way and paid thousands of dollars for that, just do it. Even if it is unnatural to your point of view, they have paid you thousands of dollars. So just do what they've requested because any other regular tattoo artist out there would. And there is also the debate in this situation of plagiarism and copying images with these sketches, which we're not going to get into yet, but I, I, I will just say it makes this entire complaint even more ironic. But then we move on to the next part of the emails where she says that they're not accurate to body position. And then she had the impression of she was looking for a fox on the run and the idea of the fox moving forward and basically Basically, that's why they drew it in this way. And look, I completely understand that miscommunication can happen in this world. Personally, I'm the worst person on planet Earth to communicate with. I will respond to your text a week later with a one-word response. And I can't understand that, especially in business, you know. People do, you know, miscommunicate and it can lead to things being produced which you didn't exactly want. And what you do there is you have a conversation, a little debate between each other about what actually needs to be done here, and you resolve it. But what you don't do is then say, well, I'm not going to fix this problem, but I am going to charge you even more money if you want something different. And by different, I mean the original thing that you paid thousands of dollars for. So now I've paid her um, uh, $2,695. The consultation 
the design fee plus a thousand dollar deposit for my actual tattoo date to book that and um, she's telling me that she wants another 2260 um, in order to just redraw my sketch even though I told her I sent her the pictures and showed her exactly what I wanted she's saying it's my communication skills and that I didn't communicate exactly what I wanted at this point of the video I don't even remember a thousand dollar deposit fee being mentioned before but yes also on top of all the other fees you're paying at a thousand dollar deposit fee now I don't exactly know why there needs to be a thousand dollar fee for a deposit that seems a little bit extortionate a thousand dollars sounds like something you pay for a damaged deposit that makes a little bit more sense because you're living in somebody's apartment and paying rents in this situation you're paying for some art on a skin that that, that I, I can't really make out any justifications here so maybe on top of the other two things i mentioned earlier of things not being provided that you asked for no resolve being happened after that i think we are gonna have to add on free there's just too many extortionate prices in this situation because you know yeah usually i am up for people getting a bag and stuff but this is just taking the piss at this point point. and in the emails courtney is genuinely being very fair they're simply just asking for a refund on this one thousand dollar deposit and i can completely understand understand that given the fact that no tattoo at this point of time has actually even happened and you're probably thinking yeah that's a pretty justifiable reason to want your money back well not just the money but just one part of the money she's not asking for everything back she's just asking for the one little thing the deposit and how does Lindsay respond to it well she she says this and of course you and i know that this response is going to be absolutely tragic so then she kindly comes back and tells me that i can um do this option where I just pay for option one again for another $16.95 instead of the $22.60 and she'll make me another sketch. So again, I'm just trying to make her understand that I didn't, I wasn't aware when I booked the consultation that I was going to have to pay this design fee. This is genuinely absolutely outrageous. And I'm going to put you guys in a scenario now to the people that have never had a tattoo like myself. I'm going to give you a scenario which I think can be quite similar. Similar here for example you go into a restaurant you pay for a big old bowl of carbonara you sit at your sleep for 20 minutes and then the waiter comes and what he does is place um, a big old bowl of plain spaghetti there's no sauce there's no bacon there's no cheese there's nothing just spaghetti you paid $25 for that spaghetti thinking that you're gonna get carbonara and then you go and complain to the waiter saying hey oh, This isn't what I asked for could you please bring me what I asked for and they turn to you and they say nope we're going to take away that spaghetti and then we're going to charge you what you paid for that spaghetti for your original order of carbonara. You are paying two prices for the one thing that you actually wanted. It makes no sense. And to be honest, maybe my analogy there makes no sense, but I, I hope you kind of get what I'm trying to say here. Pretty much, this whole thing is absolute bollocks. And at this point of Tattoo Gate, I can completely understand why a lot of people are starting to call this a scam. Even though other developments came after this, which actually showed real deceptive practices at this point of time given what we know and what we've seen in these emails i really can only say that in my personal opinion not from the legal sense but just in general an opinion based on shithousery i can see this and think that this is in my opinion a scam not in the legal sense because we've got to say that for legal reasons but in my opinion this is a very sussy wussy situation but then it gets a bit strange because in these emails Lindsay brings up the fact that that there was a fourth option that she could have taken in this situation because you know with those three options which i presented earlier of the one thousand five hundred dollar fee the two thousand something and six thousand dollar fee well according to Lindsay in the emails there was a fourth option outside of a collaboration based project which is pretty much when you provide some art they make their own art and you come together to make a piece and you make a tattoo out of that piece that is apparently what the three options were in the situation but according to Lindsay in these emails this wasn't the only option and there was actually a fourth option and I understand you're yeah, probably a little bit confused because that's a lot of words what I just said there about things that you may not possibly understand so what I'm gonna do is once again play Courtney's TikTok. I don't think that she was clear I would have picked option four if I knew that that was an option for me um, and the fact that I paid her $16.95 for that Fox sketch I feel like there's good compensation for her time but I think that the thousand dollar deposit that I gave her for 
my tattoo session that is not going to be happening um i would like that returned now i just want to interject here quickly and there's nothing deep or philosophical i can offer here other than just saying this is so unbelievably nasty and harsh let's just think about some context for a second here i understand that you'll probably say oh well you shouldn't be spending the money if it is that situation anyway but i am going to say think of the economic climate that we currently live in it's a difficult world that we're in and paying for things right now is quite difficult given how expensive stuff is so when somebody isn't even getting the product that they paid for and you're refusing to give them money back that is absolutely despicable and as i said people are probably going to say oh well you shouldn't be spending money like that if the climate is that difficult I i'm sorry but i don't know the financial situation of courtney but because somebody is in a bad financial place that doesn't mean that they don't have the right to have nice things and treat themselves every now and again i absolutely hate that mindset and again i don't know what courtney's situation is but as somebody that didn't have much money growing up i hated it when people said that sort of thing and i still do today but i'm, I'm going a bit off on a tangent here let's uh continue with things getting absolutely terrible it would also be nice if she would take some responsibility to say that i forgot to tell you about option four or i should have asked more questions um, during the process. Like she's the professional. She designs these tattoos for a living. Um, if she didn't feel like she was clear on what I wanted, I would have preferred more questions. Um, we met for half an hour on Zoom. I was supposed to get a 45 minute consultation. It only took half an hour. She had 15 more minutes to ask me more questions if she thought she needed more information. I just didn't feel like I, I, I didn't, I can't read her mind either. I didn't know that I had to tell her I wanted a full fox. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, not to sound like a millennial on TikTok, but you know, there is a lot to unpack here. Firstly, the consultations were done over Zoom. Now, given the context of everything that's happened in the last three years, I can understand that businesses like to use Zoom and even after anything, still like to use Zoom because, you know, it, it kind of cuts out a lot of time that needs to happen to get to meetings and stuff like that. I understand that. But as somebody that has done consultations over Zoom, usually if you had to pay a fee for those consultations, you would expect them to be less in cost than how a consultation would cost in person because, you know, in person, they're, they're there is a bit more quality to it you know you're having a one-on-one -on -one face to face conversation whereas over zoom it's a little less professional it's a little less easier for the person in the business and honestly the communication usually isn't as good so when you're being charged a hundred plus dollars for that consultation it, it is a little bit even more ridiculous when it comes to the price aspect of everything but then you have to think about this for a second add in the consultation time over zoom which is probably quicker than an in-person consultation then add in the time to make this abomination of a sketch around an hour's work combined has been done here in my personal opinion and then just add in the context that Lindsay is incredibly defensive and simply refuses to give any money or any forms of compensation back whatsoever combine all of these things and it kind of brings me to this theory slash conclusion that the mysterious option four that has been mentioned throughout this was not never even an option until Courtney called Lindsay out on all of the things in this situation. And the reason I've come to this conclusion based on those things that I just mentioned is because, yes, yeah, she has made a lot of money off hardly any work. And this clearly isn't a one-time thing, in my opinion, because if it was, I think that she would not be willing to risk her reputation by refusing to give any money back whatsoever. And I think this is simply a practice that Lindsay likes to carry out on vulnerable people that probably don't know much about the tattoo industry. And the thing is, this wild theory of mine is backed up by Lindsay herself because somebody actually linked a mysterious comment where Lindsay is saying, I'm so thankful to have learned the process from you, Russa Bot, in the Tattoo MBA via Launchpad doc community. I've made an extra $17,000 in the last four weeks on design collabs alone the process works if you believe it. Now ladies and gentlemen once again I am extremely sweaty but also this is where things start to get interesting. This is where the deep dive starts to become a little bit, a little bit, not creepy, but a little bit wild at that because it starts to show that some very deceptive practices are being well 
practiced here because a design collaboration was what Courtney purchased in this free part offering that she originally got before she knew about the alternative fourth part. And as I said, I think the reason she only found out about the fourth part after everything is because yeah, that part wasn't available until you paid for one, two or three. Because if you then reveal that you have that uh, cheaper option, which isn't a design collaboration with a reference, you can then kind of, I guess, get away with it and say, oh, well, they could have paid for the cheaper option if they wanted, yet that option was never apparently originally presented. So it's pretty much a very well unethical yet good way of getting quick and easy money at a very fast rate. You can do this to a lot of people because as we've seen with this sketch, which is an utter monstrosity, this probably took around 10 minutes to make if that, and we also have to bring into the whole plagiarism aspect, which we will get into later in this video, this, <laughs> in my opinion, only starts to highlight even more as a scam, again, in my opinion, based on everything, and especially this comment. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, Courtney isn't the only person that has actually spoken up against Lindsay recently, because with Tattoo Gate, it led to a lot of people out there speaking about her, but also a lot of other things like Google reviews from months before Tattoo Gate were exposed where people were criticizing Lindsay for these exact the same deceptive practices. And the thing is with those practices, it gets even funnier when you realize that the person that she originally commented thank you to has even put up an apology video recently for even promoting these exploitative ideas about quickly making money in unethical ways. And ladies and gentlemen, I do want to take a look at this apology Apology, but I also want to say before we do that, with these deceptive practices and promoting these ideas and trying to get other tattoo artists to follow suit, this is extremely damaging for just any other tattoo artist out there that works a good, honest living. Because sadly, when it comes to these situations of overcharging scams and deceptive practices, it affects the honest, hardworking person who just charges regular rates. But because of these situations on TikTok, people will start to be, oh, you you're charging too much for your products. You're charging too much for your tattoos. When the most part is, is a lot of tattoo artists are underpaid and don't get enough money for their masterpieces. And I think with situations like this, where these ideas are being promoted of exploiting customers out there, it's only going to actually lose money and damage real hardworking tattoo artists. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, let's actually get into this apology video. Now, I'm not going to take a look at all eight parts because to be honest with you, this apology just just kind of feels like it's been written by chat GBT. I know a lot of you have been waiting for a statement from me regarding the viral TikTok videos being dubbed Tattoo Gate. First, allow me to start off by apologizing to the client who posted the original video. You paid for a service you expected and did not receive. That is not something that I or anyone in the tattoo community stands for. I am sorry. I'm sorry, but I can completely see the chat GBT criticism here. This apology just feels like somebody is reading a script, and, and maybe they are, but I do think this person has to take a level of responsibility here, because to be honest with you, they are the origin story of Tattoo Gate. They promoted these ideas, and I can understand that, yes, as I said throughout this video, a lot of tattoo artists out there don't get paid what they're worth, but given the, the promotion that they have made, which has made this person, Lindsay, go out and pretty much, in my opinion, take advantage of people financially where they made $17,000 in a month, you got to take some level of responsibility. And in fairness, they are here. And yeah, maybe it was written by AI. But at the end of the day, I, I guess at least they're apologizing. At the end of the day, I am completely in favor of artists getting paid a fair amount, if not even a little bit extra than they probably should be. But this situation, as I said, at Absolutely isn't that. I mean, $17,000 in a month when you're producing things like this, again, is absolutely wild. But then that leads us into somebody else's negative experience with Lindsay, because there are quite a lot. I guess it was only a matter of time before somebody else came out with a story about this same artist. So uh, I'm going to share my story about how I was basically scammed out of four thousand dollars from this same artist because it was actually 2021 that i booked my consult with her initially paid my 180 dollars and 
yeah, we had a consultation that I wanted my shoulder and up into my collarbone here. So I have uh, birds that I wanted covered. So uh, over the phone, we discussed the design, you know, floral and that sort of thing. And um, she quoted me $1,700 for that tattoo. Again, going here and up to here. And she said 50% deposit due, so $850. So I e-transferred her the $850. Appointment time finally comes uh, and it's December, 2022 now. Okay, and a few days before the appointment, she calls me to go over the design. And she says, hey, I'm not, um, I'm not gonna be able to do the birds. Like I can't cover it with the design. So we're just gonna do the shoulder. And I was like, well, that's not what we had discussed and what I was quoted. Uh, and she said, if you want to change the design, then you have to pay a whole new consultation. Now keep in mind, this is right after she changed the design. Uh, she said, if I don't like the new plan, I can cancel and I would lose my $850 deposit. Yeah, she was quite rude, quite rude. And so obviously I felt completely obligated to go to this appointment. Um, it's not a, wasn't gonna be a huge tattoo, so it should be able to be done in one day. And uh, so a couple days later, the appointment comes, I show up at 9 a.m. appointment time. And uh, this lovely human doesn't even start until close to 1 p.m. She tattoos me for two and a half hours, gets the outline done, and then she says that she has to leave to pick up her kids. Now, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, I will just say I'm not disagreeing with what they're saying here or saying I don't believe them, but I am saying that there are no screenshots provided here, so you should take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. But to be honest with you, I don't really know why somebody would put their face in a lie like this where they could so easily be sued. But yes, I'm going to take this as true because to be honest with you, their complaint does actually lie up with one of the Google reviews complaints, which we will get into later. It has a pretty exactly familiar story to what she is saying here. So I'm going to say that what she is saying here probably is true. And yet again, another example of Lindsay using unethical ways to make money out of people without even giving them the tattoos. And that's something I really want to stress on here. We're like 40 minutes into this video, maybe even more, and not one singular human being has got a tattoo yet? Do you not understand how ridiculous that is, given how much we have said so far? This whole thing is just so manipulative and wrong, and I hope people don't get a negative opinion on artists because of this really scummy tactic. Now, I understand throughout this video, there's probably been the question of why did these people even pay these fees? Now, I am going to answer that question, but I will now play an example of where this person actually tried to refuse the payments and your question will then be answered by this person because you will find out what happens when they don't pay the fees but i will also answer why they even originally tried to accept the fees in the first place i um went to the next tattoo appointment in january and she does about three and a half hours more work just over three hours i told her i'm not paying uh any more money you have three thousand dollars already um she says if i don't pay that she's gonna call the cops um, I leave, she calls the cops. And um, not only that, she takes my driver's license with my personal information and she sends it to every tattoo artist that she knows and tells them that I don't pay and tries to get me, get me blacklisted. All these tattoo artists are sharing on their Instagram stories my driver's license and saying that I skip out on paying and I'm a criminal. I'm getting people messaging me saying, hey, this is you, Are you? what's going on? Um, anyways, I talked to the cop, or the cop calls me, and I explain the whole situation. And, and so he says, okay, I understand. Um, this is not the first complaint that he's had, or first issue he's had with this artist. Um, multiple people have had issues with her. Um, he says that, you know, as absolutely awful as it is what she's doing and immoral, um, legally, I do have to pay her. So according to this person, not only did they not get what they originally requested, but they were treated badly, they had their time wasted, and when they refused to pay for a product that they didn't even request, they had the 
police called on them and they also had their reputation absolutely decimated by this person completely and utterly maliciously. This person has had their money pretty much just taken from them. Obviously, legally, I have to say, nothing illegal technically has happened here, which she actually goes on to mention in the video of a conversation between her and the police and she does go on to eventually sadly pay these fees but ultimately something doesn't have to be illegal for it to be unethical but yeah you now know what happens when somebody refuses to pay it when they don't get what they asked for but obviously people have asked well why would you even agree to pay the fees in the first place even if you thought that you were getting that tattoo that you requested well to be honest with you they probably thought that the fees were fair because they probably thought that the art this person had done previously was very good now personally i could never imagine paying six thousand dollars for any tattoo but if you are a, a big lover of tattoo artists i can understand why some people may pay those fees or maybe they just didn't understand the market and to be honest with you i think that's more likely to be the answer here and probably why Lindsay is charging these fees i don't think that she necessarily targets people who are experts in tattoos i think she targets people who aren't really the most knowledgeable in that sort of category and and scope and that brings us back to courtney and the tattoo of her fox because yes that was one of the main origin stories in this situation but the thing is despite the thousands of dollars paid for the fox sketch some TikTok user out there actually discovered a photo from Etsy was used and traced and used as this image that she provided to Courtney. Yes, this isn't even an original drawing according to this TikTok user's discovery and instead is a slightly reworked sketch. And now obviously reference photos are fine, but to me, this definitely doesn't seem like that. But ladies and gentlemen, it isn't even just with the fox situation somebody then went onto Lindsay's tattoo eyes page and discovered one of the pieces of artwork that she had done was yet again another trace and albeit a very bad trace i'm not exactly sure you know how she's made this sketch look bad because i, I don't think sketching is too difficult to do and if you are the person that's got this tattoo well honestly it's not looking good, Brev. And yes, as you can probably imagine with where we're at to in this point of the storyline, things aren't exactly looking too good and Tattoo Gate really started to explode. A lot of people out there started to give their two cents. People just started to go up in uproar about this situation because innocent people have lost a lot of money in this situation and I can completely understand the frustration. And with that, it led to even more deep dives happening with the said Google reviews that I mentioned earlier. And in these Google reviews, you can pretty much just see people having very familiar experiences with everything mentioned in the TikToks previously, especially the one where there wasn't screenshots, familiar prices being mentioned, and I think this actually is just them complaining on Google reviews before this situation even blew up, which makes me think this whole thing is even more of a deceptive practice. It wasn't like one bad experience, there's clearly a history here, and that's only backed up by Lindsay herself. But ladies and gentlemen, even even with everything that we've discussed so far, it somehow doesn't end there. When I make this video, when I started working on it, I was thinking, do I even have a video topic here? Is there even much to speak about? Well, apparently there is, because even a, a, a former or somebody that was going to be an apprentice of Lindsay came out and spoke about their experiences with this tattoo parlor. If you haven't heard about Tattoo Gate, just look it up on TikTok. But if you're here, you probably have that woman who wanted the fox tattoo. I realized I know the artist that she's talking about. And I had an interaction with this artist about maybe four years ago. It was before I became a tattoo artist. It was before I got into the industry. I was looking to get into the industry. I wanted an apprenticeship. And I had had many, many bad opportunities, you know, like there's no bad opportunities, but these were like predatory opportunities. So I was hoping that this was my opportunity. And she presented me with two options. I could pay her, which I was not in a financial position to be able to do. And it was a lot of money. It was like $10,000 or more. I don't quite remember exactly, but it was a lot. And obviously I couldn't afford to do that, but it didn't seem like she wanted me to do that anyway. Like if I paid her, she was just gonna show me the bare minimum, kind of tour me around the shop and just be done with it because she just wanted my money. 
or I could take her free option, which ultimately would have worked out better for her in the long run. She wanted me to do an apprenticeship to whatever extent she decided was necessary. However many years she wanted me to work for her for free, that's what the plan was, was to just keep working for her for free until she decided I was ready, which wasn't even opposed to that. You know, at this point I trusted her, I trusted her judgment. I was like, sure, yeah, okay, fine. But she also continued and said that she wanted me to commit minimum like 10 years to her shop and her shop alone. Again, not opposed to that idea. Whatever. Maybe I'd like it there. Maybe it would be great. Maybe we'd be great friends. Not exactly. Um, it ended up being that she wanted to move to Mexico with her mom and have me run her tattoo shop for her and send her all of the money. So I would be doing all of the work and she would be getting all of the profit and I'd be doing it for her clients her way. And I didn't take that apprenticeship, but I felt like this was probably the time, if ever, to share that story. I think this is just a complete and perfect representation of who Lindsay is as a tattoo artist and possibly just as a human being. Somebody that is just willing to put themselves ahead of everybody no matter what, even in unethical circumstances. As we've seen, she has taken advantage of customers out there, but she's even possibly doing it to, well, possible employees. Now, the person does go on to say that, yes, they weren't hired by this person, but as you can see from the very get-go of even the possibility of this person working for Lindsay, Lindsay wanted to have some form of financial exploitation here, which is obviously disgusting. And ladies and gentlemen, I like making money, you probably like making money but at the end of the day if you're going to do it in unethical ways i think it's deserving of being called out on and this does bring us towards the ending of the tattoo gate timeline not much has really come out since then more tattoo artists have come out and given their two cents in their opinion but overall this is the whole saga a bunch of people out there were ripped off taken advantage of financially whether you can say it was illegal or legal i'm having to say it is a legal thing that's happened here but again Again, that doesn't necessarily make that ethical. A lot of people have been debating whether that people can make claims on this in court. I'm not an expert on that sort of thing, so I'm not going to give an opinion on that. But one of the people in the situation did say that, as I said earlier, they spoke to a police officer and there was apparently nothing technically illegal happening in this situation. And this person was just, in general, a bit of a bell end. And I think that is the case conclusion of most situations on TikTok. Yes, it isn't a legal situation, but that doesn't excuse you from being a complete and utter bell end and with that i think we should end this story on a very happy note because despite all of the thousands of dollars wasted in this situation a very famous tiktoker came out who was known for their tattoo art and they pretty much offered to fly courtney out and pay for a tattoo for free tattoo gate you may have seen this ever developing tale of a tattoo artist swindling people out of money running a scam, selling people the most expensive traced sketches. I wanna fix this. I've been working together alongside my sponsors H2Ocean and my manager Jennifer Lee, and we are going to fly this young woman out to Los Angeles, California, and I am going to tattoo this fox. And because she's already out multiple thousand dollars, we're gonna do this for free. That's right, completely free. I really just wanna uh, fix the wrong that has been done. And I also love tattooing foxes. <laughs> And she also came across very honest and genuine and um, and she's a mother and it's Mother's Day. So thank you, Jen Lee and H2Ocean for helping me make this happen. And uh, stay tuned as I update you through the process. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And to be honest with you, despite other people have clearly lost money in the situation, it's just nice to see that somebody is actually getting some level of, I don't know, compensation, even though it's not compensation from the original person in the story. It is nice to see what's happening here. And I truly hope that this goes ahead with, because to be honest with you, I think in these TikTok stories, it's very rare for an actual happy ending to happen. And it's clear that we may possibly actually have that here. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the ending of TikTok tattoo gate. I can only conclude this scenario by saying TikTok is just an absolutely stupid place. None of this even needed to happen like most scenarios. There could have just been a conversation. People were given their deposit back because it's not like Courtney was even asking for all of the money back. But no, people had to be greedy. People had to take advantage of others, even in the world that we are currently in. And that is tattoo gates.
But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the ending of the video. Thank you very much for watching this story sort of video deep dive into another TikTok controversy. If there are any more things that you want me to cover, please let me know down below. Because to be honest with you, I need to make more videos where I can pay for more baby wipes to wipe the sweat off my head. I am very sorry for being sweaty in this video. It's very hot right now and my room is hot. I've got two big lights on me and I apologize for that. But uh, if you could do me a favor, please like this video. Please comment your opinions down below. If you've got any experience with tattoo artists like this in the world, let me know your stories and opinions down below. Uh, social media is down below. Podcast down below. All there in the description. Thank you for coming along and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Bye-bye and have a cracking week.